Oh boy, the only thing I have to say is hashtag BPMPP. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Candy and the Gang. This is season one, episode four. Listen, we're four episodes in. Um, I'm still on board. I'm still enjoying. I'm loving these guys and girls. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. They are doing a doggone thing. I've been watching now Candy's after show as well, which is um, called Speak On It. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time she does. It's called Speak On It. But that's what she says every time they start. Is it just Speak On It? I'm like, Candy is so silly. She knows how to brand. She knows how to market and how to brand and how to say and do things that just stick in your head. But she um, did a really good interview with the OLG. She did one with Philip. Um, uh, she talked to Dawn Juan, I think. And it's just, it's it's and she and the best one so far was the OLG one because Aunt Bertha got mad, baby, and got up and walked out. She just got pissed up, pissed off. Said, "I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm done." You know how she did. And then the one with Brian. Brian, just child, get your listen. I'm gonna tell you. Spoiler alert. When you go to speak on it with Brian, take your Kleenex with you. You're gonna need them. It was really, really good. But anyway, let's talk about this episode. <laughs> okay, so we start off with um Patrick. Petty Petty Patrick. That's what I'm gonna start calling you. Old Petty Petty Patrick. You cute. But you messy. You messy just like your godmother. So, yeah, Candy's your godmother. Uh, you petty. He brings Safari down to the OLG. And then they sit at a table right in front of Chandrika. See, you and Chandrika got some unfinished business. Now, you can keep telling us anything that y'all want to tell us. But y'all got some unfinished business. Y'all ain't done with each other. Whatever that was y'all was doing, this, ain't that what you said that's what y'all was doing? It was it was so good that y'all can't let it go. Feel so good. My mind can't let go. Y'all remember that? Patrice Russian used to be the jam. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all probably too young to know that song. But Patrick... And Chandrika, y'all go look it up, honey. Feels So Good by Patrice Russian. That's what y'all got going on, honey. Your mind won't let it go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Baby, that thing, y'all was, I think y'all both let each other have it. I don't think one got the other one matized. I think they got each other, baby. They was blowing it up. They was tearing it up down there to the OLG. And they can't leave each other alone. They're just silently feuding and it's like okay cool safari um yeah okay anyway she comes and she's like oh no i want cornbread i'm vegan well, cornbread have honey, it got eggs, it got. <laughs> it's just sit right over there munching and crunching on. That's a girl. Might as well add you uh, some chicken and and a and a pig foot. Give me a pig foot uh, and a bottle of beer. You might as well have had it, honey, because you ate that cornbread, honey. It wasn't vegan. Anyway, <laughs> but that that whole thing. You don't want him to, this is, we've actually progressed now. The party's totally been canceled. She has totally canceled the whole housewarming altogether. And she, 
He introduces her to Torin. Torin came in. He introduces him to T Torin to Safari for the first time while they're sitting there at the OLG and fires Torin at the same time. As of course Torin says, "Oh yeah, we get you know get everything going on your place and this that." And fired him right there, and I felt I was like, "Okay, Torin." Torin was putting a little twenty on ten as we move forward. An episode, but the fact of the matter is, it's embarrassing. You're introducing me to this person and firing me at the same time. And that wasn't very friendly. That was kind of shady. But again, poor baby, Patrick's nose is wide open. And then he's so busy being petty, trying to work Chandrika's nerves, that I don't think he actually even really, I don't think he was being malicious in that. I think he just didn't give it any thought. He really didn't give it any thought, and it just wasn't very friendly. It wasn't very friendly. So let's move on. So old Dom, Dominique, and Brian are still going back and forth. They went, you know, it's the same cat and mouse game, and then they hiding in the office kissing and carrying on. I was like, child, a mess. And then there's this power struggle about his birthday. He's going to have a birthday party over at Blaze, and it's with his family. And he wants her to come, and she's like, no, nah, I ain't coming. So there's like a little power struggle that's actually going on with that. Let's move on. It ain't all that deep. They got to do some more for me with their story because it's just kind of lingering at this point. It ain't no real big deal um, at this point. Moving on. Philip. And Andre. So we end up meeting Philip's friend Andre. So Philip actually does have one friend. <laughs> Poor Philip. He's so cute. He is so cute with the most beautiful teeth and everything and body and stuff. He's cute. And Andre's cute. Baby, they, listen, let me tell you. The screen was filled and it was complete eye candy. So thank you, Candy. It was I, Candy. That's the look at him, honey. They both just as sharp as they could be. But child, Andre know Philip full of shit. He's looking at him <laughs> just like Felipe knew to Philip full of shit. Everybody knows you're a terrible manager. <laughs> the people that know you the best know you on that bullshit. <laughs> We're at Bertha. It take our Bertha to tell you you on that bullshit, <laughs> and everybody around you know it. So that was nice to see that he got one friend, and that's nice. Moving on, Candy and Todd decide that they need to have a town meeting because Don Juan had pulled them to the side and brought them up to speed on the fact that when they had their last little meetup, that Chandrika had gone back into one of the offices back there where there was there's cameras and she was talking smack, okay? Talking smack and the camera caught it. So he recorded it, played it for talk. She stated that, you know, some stuff about Don Juan and not doing, like, it's like he's not doing his job. Candy and Todd ain't there. It's like they just don't give a, f I said, oh my. So you're literally talking about the owners and the boss, because that's who they are. Dawn Juan's the boss, and they're the owners. And, of course, you know she never had that nice to say about Philip. And she got busted. She got busted. So, um, Candy said, well, let's have this town meeting. And let's do a, um, and I'm taking this out of, out of context, because before, this is the meeting. I'm sorry. Work with me, people. This is the meeting right here I'm getting ready to tell you about where Chandrika left this meeting, talked smack, and then Don Juan went to Todd and Candy, and that brought up about another meeting. So let me just clear that up because I know I confused y'all all together like, wait a minute, James, what happened? No. We had the town meeting. No Philip. Okay? No Philip. Philip's not there at all. They kept him out of it because you knew a lot of the complaints was going to be with him. Which, surprisingly, it wasn't too much. Torin has some things to say. Don Juan kind of jumped on it. was like, well, Torin, you weren't the nicest either. You know, and they, they kind of cleared that up. Uh, Patrick literally stood in what he told Candy. And Candy had played it. He, 
You ain't teach them yet, good candy, how to play this game, how to be the bone carrier. And he he didn't know. He wasn't on his Real Housewives of Atlanta. He like, yeah, well, Sean Drinker said, because <laughs> they kept going around and around and around. Hey, Patrick's like, Sean Drinker said this, and Sean Drinker said that. And I said, oh, <laughs> well, you can't use him no more. <laughs> he told it all. He stood up in it. And Sean Drinker, hashtag. BP and PP. She backpedaled Buzz Bob. I didn't like, like she ain't know what he was talking about. Okay. Shondrika has all this pent up anger and she starts going at these people that work their servers. Telling the lady to shut up and just acting ugly. Acting ugly. And it ended up, the meeting ended up being a bunch of people telling on each other. A bunch of people telling on each other. Whereas the whole meeting was really about the fact that you standing out in the street talking about the food ain't good on one day and it's good on another and all, all that little nasty stuff you're saying. You talking smack and it's coming back. And you BPing and PPing. That, that's the mess. Anyway, Candy said, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a team building event. We're going to have a team building event and it's going to help us to build the rapport around here. They also talk about Sean Drinker and always being on that phone. Because that's all you ever see her doing. Was well, supposed to be working. Now, I don't know. But I know most jobs, you ain't even allowed to have your phone out. Ain't allowed to have your phone out. There's some jobs, if, you, if they see you with your phone in your hand, they will let you go. Right there on the spot. You don't even have to be on it. Just have it in your hand. Have it in visuals, in, in sight. And, uh, They'll let you go. So that's the best. And then Brandon, they got Brandon together. They didn't call Brandon out about not doing nothing. And then Joyce, Mama Joyce, bust out and said that Brandon, she had said something to him one day and he basically said he wasn't going to do it or whatever. And, and it was so funny how, like he didn't care about something or something. And then Mama, I can't think what the exact comment was, but Mama Joyce ran it back word for word and then said, isn't that what you did? Just to, just, that, that, isn't that just what you did, Brandon? Ain't that what you did? I said, oh, it looked bad. It looked very bad. And it's about him being lazy, basically. And then Aunt Bertha said that he literally walked in one day and she spoke to him. He didn't speak back to her. She said, I'll be damned if I ever speak to him again. <laughs> Oh. I was like, okay. Brandon went over there and gonna try to hug on brother. She was say, go on away from that shit. <laughs> she cracks me up, child. She, oh, she acts just like some of the people in my family. Just as cantankerous as me. <laughs> I'll be damned if I speak to him again. <laughs> Sorry, that person. So that was that on the meeting. And like I said, you know, I was twisting it all up. A little bit after that, it's it actually was like a couple days after that is when Don Juan approached Ta and Candy and showed them, you know, Sean Drinker was pissed off and she was talking straight smack. And the cameras picked up the conversation. Anyway, so let's go back. Torin decides to talk to Patrick about how he fired him and, and that kind of thing. And then also his little situation with Miss Safari and how he's basically changing. That conversation was a whole mess. A whole mess. Patrick got it. He got it. And he apologized to Torin. No fight, no argument. He's just so laid back. Like, he's like, okay. You know, he apologized and told him, I'm a little whipped right now. And that made me fall out laughing like, okay, well, what more do y'all want? He didn't already told y'all. She didn't put that thing down on him. She put the boom down on him. So what more do y'all want? It just is what it is at this point. Y'all just got to take it for what it is. And that's it. Ain't nothing you can do about it, baby. Tucci always wins. That's just the way it is. Anyway, um... After that, we saw Safari sitting with 
um, Patrick. And Patrick asked her again about the party. And baby, when I tell you, no, I'm sorry. He called her. He called her. And she told him, I said no to the party, this, that, thing, and the other. And then she hung up on him. Then she hung up on him. After that, because that was directly after the conversation with him and Tori. After that, we saw him sitting with her, and he brings it up again. And her whole thing about not having a party, she kept saying, everybody don't need to know where you live. Girl, everybody already knows where you live. It lives across the street from the damn restaurant, and everybody knows it, that him and Melvin live there. Everyone knows that. What are you talking about? So I said, mm-mm. Mm -mm. And then it goes back to Chandra. I said, so you're a little insecure is what's going on, Miss uh, Safari. You're a little insecure. And she used all these excuses. And the excuses didn't make no sense. It all rolled back down to you feel a little insecure about Chandrika. And guess what? You should. You should. He's like, oh, you and her boyfriend already been into it. So... You know, why would you want him to know where you live? He already know where he live. If he wanted to do something to him, he would have been dead. it. He already knows where he lives. Hello? He got the, the GPS. He's banging the GPS. As long as he got Sean Drinker, you know he knew where he lived. Like, stop it. That's all ridiculous. Girl, it's all coming across very petty, very immature, and the thing is, you have insecurities as pertains to Miss Chandrika and how she was banging your man. And I and you should. You should, girl, because guess what? From what I'm seeing, girl, they was tearing each other's little stuff up, honey. And yeah, you might would want to be a little uneasy about it. I get it. This is the part that shocked me, though. When he said, um, because they, they were actually going down, he said, well, let's just build a list. Then we're going to go to the party for... Um, she's like, oh, you know, I go off of um, off of energy and all of this old stuff. We'll go to Brandon's party, and then you, you'll you be interacting with the people, and then we can go back to the list and say who yes and who no. He said, they're writing up the list. She said, oh, well, that's okay. That person's okay. That person gets the tour, and, and this is what's shopping when it's got the tour. She's like, mm, no. Well, wait a minute, boo. Why don't you like tour? And tour ain't did nothing to you. Torin was very nice to her. I was like, what is that all about? What is that about? I think that she don't want him around nobody that can actually get him to do what they want, like her. Because with Torin, he turned everything over to Torin. Like, he's like, okay, yeah, you design it. Just tell me what I owe. And then when she came, she's like, no, I'll do it. So I think she's kind of about anybody that he'll listen to. See, my thing is I, I want to see her interact with Candy or with the OLG. And then that'll tell me what I think really about Safari. I ain't really going to get down into what I really think about her. I ain't going to say nothing. I want to see her interact with the family. That's what I want to see. Okay, so moving on from that. But that Torin thing just blew me. I was like, what? That was weird. Anyway, moving on. Richard and Brian. Uh, Richard, sorry. Richard. Shardo. He had went over to see Brian, and they over there talking, the child. And that's where uh, Brian, and see, they are, it is the truth that they feel like they can override things that Philip does. And he's like, oh, I've been working on my own business, and it's been really picking up. You know, he's making those soulful egg rolls. And um, he's like, I've just been working on my own business, and that's why I hadn't called Candy yet. So they really do believe they could just call Candy and overturn things that Philip has done. That is not good. That is not good for business at all. But um, they talked about that. They talked about the business. Chow, Shardo had <laughs> make this egg roll so hard. I said, Chow, what is it, a potato chip now? <laughs> They looked really good, though. Like how what he did, it looked good. It was very interesting. Look, but he made it so hard. And I said, child, that is a kettle kettle corn chip. <laughs> it was so crunchy and hard. Honey. 
then they actually talked about Brian and Dom and the whole bull crap of that. You know, like the whole it's just bull crap. You know, they're working together as a conflict of interest, and it is actually infiltrating into the work, the workplace. So a mess. Moving on. So uh, they had the party. We're at the party with Brandon's family. Nothing to see here, folks, at all. Dom actually showed up in this little dress, and I, the parents they were they were satisfied with her. They were satisfied with her. Um, he's just so I don't know how I felt about that though for one of my boys because it, it's it's like he's throwing himself at her. She's kind of like playing the back, but I guess. Yeah, I, I know how I would feel about one of my boys with that that type of situation. But again, growing up, that's what my grandmother always said you wanted in a boyfriend. You wanted the boyfriend that likes you more than you like him. So going by what I was actually taught, that's exactly what I was taught. But then being on the parenting side and you have boys of your own, do you really want to watch your boy go and be throwing themselves at a woman or a male or whatever they, they prefer that you could clearly see they're not as much as in, into them. So it's kind of hard looking from, the, yeah. A whole different perspective. I was like, okay, granny, I wish she was still around. I could ask her, girl, do you feel, did you feel that same way about my uncle? But she probably did. Cause truth be told, my uncle, found a woman that liked him more than he liked hers. <laughs> moving on, because here I go, here I get in trouble. I'm moving on. I think my grandmother taught my uncle that same lesson. <laughs> anyway, I know why I got that lesson, because I'm a little different. You see all this pink and stuff? Well, the pink ain't really the thing. You see everything else going on. I know why I got the lesson I got, but I think my uncle, who is regular, you know, he regular dude, honey, I think he got that same lesson. I I'm pretty sure of it. Let me shut up and get off of this. Down off my got the egg on soapbox, but on bump, bump, bam, and I'm back. Let's move on. Child, Lord have mercy. I know I ain't editing that out. Let's move on. <laughs> the party. Nothing to see here. No real big deal. Um, only thing, Torin and Safari got to actually interact. And she still, like, everything got cleared up. And it was like, he's like, I was really embarrassed. Like, you know, I got fired, like, right in front of you the first time I met you and stuff. It just kind of threw me off. He's like, but, you know, now I'm saying, I think you're cool and, and everything like that. But nothing, you know, and nothing had to do with her. It had to do with him. You know, and, and all of that. I don't know. I think she just don't have it for Torin. And he's like, so now are we having a party or what, what are we doing? And she's like, I talked to him. I don't think there's going to be no party Torin, honey. I don't think she's having a child. And it ain't got nothing to do with you. Well, I, she don't like you either. But it really has to do with Miss Chandrika. Power. Power. Are you giving up your power? Because you got some power over him, too. But you giving up your power to Miss Chandrika. Not a good move. Moving on. Last thing. Last thing. <sighs> Todd and Candy come and make a pop-up. And they pull Miss Chandrika. And they're telling her, basically, we, you know, things that you have said have actually come back. They didn't tell her, you know, about Dawn Juan and the tapes and none of that. They just told her, we've heard what you've been saying, and this is the thing. You know, they took us into a cliffhanger. Candy's like, um, why do we want to keep you on board if you're talking about us like that? You're like in the street saying that we don't give, like, what is that? Like, what are you doing? And she's, you know, Candy was trying, it was so funny because when Candy was going into the meeting, Candy was feeling a kind of way. Like she didn't want to, to have the confrontation. She just didn't. She's like, you want to do it now, Todd? He's like, mm-hmm. 
Then Todd's here for the bullshit. He's like, I don't care nothing about these people. I run them. I think Todd really want them all out. Like Todd is Team Philip. Like just clear it out and let's start over. I probably would too. I probably would have. But you know, it is what it is. Um, as far as my business goes, as far as the relationships, love the kids. But I'd have fired all their asses. Anyway, um, Candy's talking and she's not being forthcoming. She's sitting there looking simple. And she's trying to figure, well, who said it? Well, who said it? It's not about who said it. You said it. And you're basically, you're not saying that you didn't say it. Thank God that she didn't sit there and say she didn't say it. And they actually heard you. Uh, because they haven't told her that they actually heard her, her actual voice saying it. She's sitting there. She is like consumed with who said it. Who gives a damn? You're talking to the owners of the business that you are talking badly about and they're giving you a paycheck every two weeks and candy bust her down and said girl we need to figure out do you want to be here and it actually cut out there girl the whole thing like i said was bp and pp backpedaling popping not a good look miss chandrika i can't wait to see where we go from here on the next episode look like she's gonna be doing more of this uh sleuthing and and inspector gadgeting trying to figure out who said it you said it that's who said it you damn fool anyway i'm out of here chad and been all over the place with this but i'm i'm putting this up just like it is i ain't edited nothing nothing it was a big whole roller coaster ride listen i had a good time i hope you had a good time this has been candy and the gang Season one, episode four. I love this little show. I do. I really do. I like these kids and all their messiness. They are messy. Messy, messy, messy. But they are a good time. They really, really are. And that OLG, I just can't get enough of them, honey. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'll see y'all on the next episode. Bye, y'all.